Hello again, college football fans. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about Kirby Smart and his quarterback choose, uh, choosing decision <laughs> that he's made, his choice uh, with Stetson Bennett. And I just want to expand on that a little bit further. You know, we've talked about it all year long. Um, I think that Kirby uh, is, had, had a little bit of stubbornness in him, and I think he wanted to prove to the whole world that even in this day of high-octane passing offenses and great quarterbacks, that he could still win a national championship on the old school formula of running game and defense and a quarterback that is not dynamic but doesn't make mistakes. And uh, there's a, a lot of flaws with that this day and age in college football, one of which is um, the quarterback that doesn't make mistakes is usually not making mistakes because he's in the lead. Uh, and that's one of your huge problems right there because uh, a game manager is only a game manager with a lead, really. I mean, when you start to lose the lead and you're more than one score behind and you're forced to throw, you're throwing out of necessity and not out of luxury, um, it's a whole different ball game, and, you know, everybody knows that. And I think that in the old days, I mentioned this earlier, I think coaches have always known that an elite quarterback will get the better of an elite defense. But the, the problem with that, using that as your championship formula in the old days, was that there weren't a lot of elite quarterbacks out there and uh, you weren't necessarily going to run into one the odds of recruiting one out of high school and him meeting expectations and becoming an unstoppable force was very very rare we hardly ever saw that in college football until recent years but the the fact remains now that your, your chances of running into a team that has elite players all over the field at every position and also has an elite quarterback that can take over a game and completely neutralize a great defense, an elite defense. Uh, the chances of running into that are, are very high nowadays, so you want to make sure that you have one of those guys at quarterback in case your team falls behind like Georgia's did the other day, and they became completely inept and couldn't do anything once they got two scores behind. And I, I, everybody in the country knew it. I you know, kind of started celebrating at that point. Once we went up... 31 to 17 after the half, I started celebrating. I knew that it was over for, for Georgia because I know that Stetson Bennett cannot overcome that kind of situation. To, to have a two-score deficit against a great top-notch defense like that, um, you know, he, I, I knew what happened would happen, which is him uh, looking lost and throwing picks, and that's that's what always happens in that kind of situation. And so I think that the notion that Kirby thought he could still do that is a little bit unrealistic and a little bit stubborn on his part. Um, and also, his execution, his, uh, if, he, if he's looking at guys in the recent past, uh, and it's always Alabama team, the only teams that have really won in the last decade and a half on running game and defense without a superstar, you know, first round draft pick kind of quarterback, you know, has been Alabama. They did it. The last team to do it was the 2015 Alabama team. But listen, Jacob Coker was a very highly touted prospect, quarterback prospect coming out of high school. He had the prototypical size. He was a big, tall kid with a strong arm. Um, he wasn't a walk-on. Um, you know, Stetson Bennett, yeah, he's done a great job. For what he is, he's done great. And, you know, and I've told everybody, people are ragging on him about that game. He played as good a game as he could have played Saturday. They asked too much of him once they got down. And that's why the interceptions happened, which put a little bit of a black eye on his stat sheet. But take away those interceptions, even take away the pick six. That's a pretty dead good day at quarterback that he had, you know. Uh, but the guy on the other side is a phenom. You, you got to have a phenom. And, you know, maybe... Kirby knows that JT Daniels isn't a phenom, but that's still a maybe. Uh, and and I think that Kirby needs to take a step back and look at the decisions that he's made in his tenure at Georgia and realize that perhaps the quarterback scouting is not his forte and that maybe he should let someone else take the reins on that. Defensive guys, you know, all day, that's all you. Running backs, that's all you, Kirby. But, you know, uh, you have, you've had Jacob Eason, you've had Justin Fields, you've had JT Daniels now, who was another stud coming out of high school, and he's looked like a stud uh, the times that he's been healthy and played for Georgia, uh, fully healthy. 
But um, he keeps going with the guy that he thinks is the steady hand. He keeps, he has, and you know, Saban had this mentality for a long time. I think Saban would have just rather taken a three and out than the chances of a turnover any day of the week with the way that his defense is played and the way that, you know, other teams, the, 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 you know, adversity that was presented to him by other teams. That was enough for him. Just don't turn the ball over. Our defense will take care of it. And, and this is another one of my points, one of my Godzilla monster running backs will take care of the rest. I mean, if Kirby's going to try to do the defense running game championship run, you're going to need better running backs too, you know, because Zamir White is okay, you know, he's definitely a serviceable SEC quarterback, but he's not a monster. He's not Derrick Henry. He's not Najee Harris. I mean, and Najee Harris wasn't even a part of these running game defense champions, but, you know, he, he was a monster and he, he could have done well in that situation. Uh, you know, and when we were doing it before, we had, uh, I mean, Eddie Lacy and TJ Yeldon were a great combo. Eddie Lacy, to me, is the most underrated back that, that Saban's had. He was a total monster. Uh, went on to, you know, start in the NFL and and shine in the NFL. He was a star for a year or two for Green Bay. And then, of course, you had Mark Ingram and Trent Richardson before that. And, uh, you know, and Greg McElroy, again, was not, he was a three-star quarterback coming out of High school, he was recruited by a lot of teams. He was recruited by Texas Tech, I believe, which uh, I, I think that was still Mike Leach down there at that point. Uh, so, you know, he was no slouch at quarterback either. He was not a walk-on. And I'm not saying that JT or that uh, Stetson Bennett is a slouch. He's great. He may be one of the best uh, former walk-on quarterbacks that we've seen in quite some time. But if you're going to do this, you're going to need more elite parts at uh, on the offensive side of the ball than you have. And if you've got a guy that might be better at quarterback, the fact that you're not starting him is absolutely insane. I mean, the definition of insanity, everybody everybody says it all the time, is you know doing the same things, expecting different results. And that's what you're doing, Kirby. You're doing the same thing, expecting different results. And I don't know why uh, I'm – saying this out loud so that you can hear because I want you obviously to continue to, to do this thing but the thing about it is is uh you know Michigan could definitely you're a better team than Michigan you've got better players all across the board than Michigan does but if you keep playing this game with Stetson Bennett you might get burned by old Harbaugh and the Wolverines because uh uh, you're not going to your running game is not going to be all that great against them either. They've got a wonderful uh, running defense, and they beat Ohio State, man. I mean, Ohio State. The Cincinnati story is wonderful and great for everybody, but I think that I'm probably speaking for not only myself but the entire Bama Nation. Woo! I would be much more nervous going into this first round playoff game against Ohio State than I am Cincinnati. I just am. And I think that any uh, analyst that's honest with himself would say that if you put Ohio State and Cincinnati on a neutral field somewhere, you know, Ohio State's going to have the nod there. Probably a significant nod coming out of Vegas, if I had to guess. But, you know, that's neither here nor there at this point. But what I'm saying is Michigan is a for real team, and if you keep trying to do this stubborn banging your head up against, you know, your walk-on quarterback wall, you might wind up uh, watching the national championship game at home. Now, I don't think that's going to happen. And honest to goodness, from what I've seen from McNamara, the kid at Michigan, you know, Stetson is really on par with him as far as talent goes. So even if both running games get stifled by the defenses and – it comes down against the quarter. It comes down comes down to the quarterbacks. I probably like Stetson over that guy again. But then you got Bama coming again, and 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 uh, and I'm not saying it's impossible. It could be done, but you would need for Bama to have a little bit of a down day, and you cannot rely on that. And uh, you know, that's all I've got about that right now. And we'll be coming at you more with random thoughts and ideas in the future. Thanks for watching.